welcome again to Christ the Servant Lutheran Church on Trinity Sunday. I'm Pastor Jim John Antonio, and our Director of Music is John Kruger, and JT, Jason Thomas, is doing all of our technical work for us. He's our Director of Youth and Family Ministries, and our lector today is Rosalie Fontenot. Again, welcome to Christ the Servant. Our opening hymn today for this Trinity Sunday is hymn number 414 in the Red Hymnal. It's Holy God, We Praise Your Name. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we have an opportunity, and especially as our country is going through so much uh, at this time, so many difficult and challenging times, this would be a good time as we bow our heads in confession, uh, just a period of silence uh, to uh, come before Almighty God. Let us pray. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. May Almighty God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seen at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. What we're about to hear in our first reading from the first chapter of Genesis is actually one of two poems or hymns to God the Creator. It's actually the uh, later one. And the earlier one, this one dates to about, the one you're about to hear, dates to about the 7th century before Christ. The earlier one that dates to about the 10th century before Christ begins in Genesis chapter 2 at the end of verse 4. The first reading is from Genesis beginning chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the dry day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome 
of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed, that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 8. that you should be mindful of them. 
human beings that you should care for them. Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Now we'll welcome the gospel with the singing of the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. Now the eleven disciples went to the Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Our hymn of the day today, number 412 in the red hymnal, 412, Come Join the Dance of Trinity. Oh, 
Father, Spirit, Son, let voices rise and interweave by love and hope set free to shape in song this joy, this life, the dance of Trinity. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I always mention on just about every Trinity Sunday, this is the only Sunday of the church liturgical year, which, by the way, has been celebrated ever since about the 10th century, that celebrates a doctrine rather than a particular event in the uh, life of Jesus. And of course, sermons about doctrine usually prove to be deadly boring and terribly useless. That's because the immediate context for Trinity Sunday are actually the first two of the seven ecumenical councils. Constantine calls the first council in the year, uh, it was the Council of Nicaea in 325, and then it was Theodosius who called this, uh, the first council of Constantinople in 381. These were the first two of the seven ecumenical councils where they tried to really uh, iron out here uh, what they meant when um, speaking of the Trinity. Ironically, rather than the Trinitarian conflicts actually being about the nature of the Trinity, what it all came down to historically is that all-important question, who is Jesus? That's what these Trinitarian conflicts were all about. They were in the light of the Arian uh, heresy. I mean, it was all in that context. You know, Arius was the one who said that if Jesus is the Son, he's less than the Father, and the Son is always less than the Father, and so the Father is primary and the Son is secondary. And so you have these two ecumenical councils to address this Arian heresy and other heresies as well. And in fact, uh, who is Jesus is exactly what almost all of the heresies of the early church were about as well. If you think that perhaps you might enjoy reading more uh, detail uh, about the uh, uh, Trinitarian um, and the ecumenical councils, I would suggest this book by um, Philip Jenkins, uh, Jesus Wars. Jesus Wars, how four patriarchs three queens, and two emperors decided what Christians would believe for the next 1,500 years. Philip Jenkins has been with the uh, Humanities Department at Penn State University and also, is also a fellow at uh, Baylor University uh, here in Texas. And now it begins to get a bit more interesting, uh, at least for me. But that first ecumenical council, the Council of Nicaea, uh, fails to actually settle the issue of who Jesus is. The Trinity Sunday question might be, where are we? Where are we today when it comes uh, down to who is Jesus? That's a good question. And so we have in today's gospel text, uh, now the 11 disciples went to the Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. And it reads in our English text here, but some doubted. However, in the Greek, the word some does not appear there. Uh, so it should read, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but doubted. The word for doubt here in the Greek is distazo, distazo. The Greek word uh, doubt carries a sense of kind of standing in two places, uh, at the same time, or, or being of two minds. Uh, distazo, in this case, carries the sense of this is just too good to be true. Have you ever been there yourself, you know, where you say to, uh, about some event or some situation, well, this is just too good to be true? Well, that carries the sense of the Greek word distazo. But getting back to the Trinity Sunday question, uh, who is Jesus? Is Jesus above all the lords of this world, or is he just one among a number of lords? That's a question that all of us need to struggle with. 
Again, in today's gospel text at verse 18 here in Matthew 28, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority, imagine that, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. You know, when I read that, and on earth, I can't help but think of the Roman Empire. That was the context uh, for the early church. And again, the Trinity Sunday question uh, for us is, uh, is Jesus really above the lords of culture? That's one that it would be good for us to struggle with. Is Jesus really above the lords of culture, or is he just one allegiance among a number of allegiances? Are we to give our allegiance to Jesus in the religious arena, and then our allegiance to others in other arenas of life? Or is Jesus, or is he not, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? The answer to that question is pretty clear in both the creeds of the church and the New Testament. The Nicene Creed, begun at the Council of Nicaea, as I mentioned in 325, more than 300 bishops called together by Constantine, and finally completed at the Council of Constantinople, uh, called by Theodosius in 381, makes it abundantly clear in its wording about Jesus. As a young child growing up in the uh, Lutheran Church, in the LCA, in the Lutheran Church in America, I uh, would confess, or I at least hear the confession in the Nicene Creed every Sunday, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. I love that language in describing Jesus. God of God, light of light, very God of very God. Our contemporary translation of the original Greek text is actually uh, a little closer. The one we use every Sunday is actually a little closer uh, to the original Greek of the fourth century uh, rendering, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. That's actually a little closer to the Greek. But to tell you the truth, uh, uh, when I was growing up, Jesus was always known to me as God of God, light of light, very God of very God. But when speaking of who Jesus is, I, for one, will always remember uh, what I grew up with. And because we find ourselves this year in the Gospel according to Matthew, the question really becomes, who is Jesus in the Gospel according to Matthew? That's an important question. Who is Jesus in the Gospel according to Matthew? And to speak to that question, I think we really need to look at Matthew chapter 25, which I would argue is probably the original conclusion to the gospel according to Matthew. Uh, we're invited to see Jesus, obviously, in the hungry and the thirsty, as well as in the stranger, the sick, and the imprisoned. In fact, in all of those who are currently living on the margins of life. And finally, speaking to the question who is Jesus in the Gospel according to Matthew? Listened again to what I think of as the bookends in this Gospel according to Matthew. In the very first chapter, uh, these are beautiful bookends, we read, All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken uh, by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin, or the young woman, actually, in Hebrew. The young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God with us. We read that in the very first chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. And then I, I, I mentioned bookends because, in fact, in the very last chapter now, in chapter 28, we read uh, the words of Jesus. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age.
my pilgrim journey. Savior, let me walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee. This being one of the great festivals of the church, at least since the 10th century, uh, let us confess our faith today uh, using the words of the Nicene Creed from the Council of Nicaea and the Council of Constantinople. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. O triune God, what an exciting mystery we celebrate here today, that you, our God, are three persons, yet one being, that your essence is so far beyond our understanding. O oh, Father, you have adopted us as your children through the death and resurrection of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. O oh, Holy Spirit, you gifted us with faith in Jesus through the explosive power of of the gospel. O Holy Trinity, in whose triune name we were baptized, 
Your saving love overwhelms us. Keep us as your own. And each day, move us to declare, along with the psalmist, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. For we ask this, in the strong and beautiful name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, through all eternity. Amen. And let us pray together that prayer that Jesus, uh, loving his disciples, taught them to pray together, the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our concluding hymn today on this Trinity Sunday in your red hymn, though, it's hymn number 413. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Go in peace and serve the risen Christ. Thanks be to God.